In 2006, the first official live-action adaptation of Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels was released to television. It was a three-hour-long, two-part Christmas miniseries called Terry Pratchett's Hogfather. I first discovered this series in 2020, so I'm not clouded by nostalgia when I tell you that this is a really fun Christmas film. I call it a film, for despite it being released as a miniseries, it works best when viewed as a whole. There was a sequel to the series released in 2008. This one adapted The Color of Magic from 1983, the first book in the Discworld series. The Color of Magic is an enjoyable television experience, although not as fun as Hogfather was. But it features a lot of actors that I like, like Sean Austin, Tim Curry, David Bradley, and Christopher Lee as the voice of death. But the series I want to talk about for this video is Terry Pratchett's Going Postal from 2010. The book Going Postal was released in 2004. It covers themes of government services, corporate takeovers, human rights, and much more. In Going Postal, we follow Moist von Litvig after having been hanged as a conman. Lord Havelock Vetinari the Lord Patrician of the city-state of Ankh-Morpork gives Lipvig a second chance at an honest life. Lord Vetinari is played wonderfully by Charles Dance, as usual typecast as the smartest person in the room, slightly annoyed at everyone he has to deal with. The post office of Ankh-Morpork had long been in dire straits, and as leader of the city, Lord Vetinari naturally wants to revert it back to its former glory. A functional postal service is an important part of any society. The sending of letters through the mail may not be strictly as important as it used to, what with the new CLAC system that makes it possible to send short messages quickly through the air via message towers. But there are many physical objects that would be either impossible or just unwise to send through the air. Like medicine, goods from small businesses without their own delivery service, or voting ballots from remote residents. Or, possibly more importantly for Lord Vetinari, his own biography. With so many important things that require the affordable services of a postal system to be available for all of Lord Vetinari's citizens, he would have been a completely incompetent leader if he had not tried to save the post office, and downright villainous if he himself tried to dismantle the service. But that is the goal of the actual villain of the story, Reacher Gilt, played by Poirot himself. Gilt is the rich owner of the Clax company, and mistreats his employees for profit. He also likes to have a monopoly on sending messages, and actively sabotages the post office. Had Lord Vatnari been interested in killing the post office for good, it would have been very easy for him to just find a new postmaster with a vested interest in seeing the post office fail. But thankfully, being a good leader, Lord Vetinari looked for a man with cunning enough to save Ankh Morpork's postal service, and landed on the con man Moist von Lipwig. One of Lipwig's smartest moves when trying to save the post office was to hire a bunch of golems. These autonomous workers were able to sort and deliver the mail much faster than just a small amount of human workers could do on their own. Thankfully, nobody tried to remove the golems in this story, as that would have been a perfect way to sabotage the post office. At several points in the story, Lipwig is confronted by the spirit of the post office, who shows him visions of the people who were hurt by his many constant lies. Lipwig now has to pay for his crimes, even if it is just in a small way, by seeing the consequences of his actions. All thanks to the power of humanity's collective souls, working as one through the mail. Gaining a realization for how much he had hurt his victims, he atones by managing to expose Richard Gilt's crimes to the public. Lipwig saving the Ankh-Morpork postal service is not just good for that city-state, but also for the people in other cities that can benefit from a cheap and reliable delivery service to and from one of the most influential cities on the disc. I hope I haven't been too vague about what I'm talking about here, 
Just so that I am being extremely clear, state-run postal services should not be there to make money. They are there as an essential service, to help people. To make sure that the little people have a chance to compete with giant businesses. It may need to do things like selling stamps to have the money to stay operational. But not turning a profit is not a valid reason to try to shut down such an essential service. So be like Lord Veterinary, Moist von Lipwig, Mr. Pump and Adorable Dearheart. Save the post office.